Hi, welcome back to Defining Moments. My name is Suzanne Quast, and my guest today is Marky Costello. Marky is a talent manager and the number one media coach in the world. She's worked with some of the biggest names in entertainment, including myself. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. No, but really, she's worked with people like Whitney Cummings, CeeLo, really any TV show with a host you've seen, Marky's probably coached them. So today we're gonna to hear some of the defining moments that led Marky to become the queen of hosting. And if you're an influencer or a host, we're gonna get the inside scoop on the biz, as well as how the hosting industry is evolving and what you can do to stand out. Here are her moments. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I mean, I'm so excited. Me too. And you talked a little bit in my intro about how the business has changed so dramatically. And it really, I, I'm rebranding my whole business, you know, mm. because of all the changes. And I think in order to thrive and survive, big talent agency, everybody sort of has to really reinvent themselves. What do you mean reinvent themselves? <sighs> you know, it, I had a, I have a management company yes. and, you know, for 22 years of owning my management company, you know, we were just strictly like, you know, we manage clients, but now we have a PR arm, oh, a wow. management arm, and we have a studio where we create original content. So if I take a client on, it's like, yes, we're going to get you auditions, jobs. You also get to have creative content written and produced for you at our studio to enhance your brand, to help sell your brand. And, and we have some, an in-house PR person that will then get you on the Good Morning America, the Today oh Show, gosh. this, that. Because you have to do that in this day and age to really manage and guide talent properly. I believe that. Man so to manage and guide talent properly. But before we get into all the nitty gritty details, we have to hear how you started. And well, I feel like you like were birthed out of the womb into the Hollywood elite yes. and the best of the best. Yes. Can you I, share a little bit about your upbringing? I sure can share. Uh, my mother was Lou Costello's daughter from Abbott and Costello. Uh, my father, who's actually in town this uh, weekend doing another interview because he was a record producer. He produced a lot of On the Beach Boys albums. He produced Dennis Wilson's albums album solely, who was the drummer of the Beach Boys, but he is the last person alive, part of that rat pack of Charlie Manson. So he's in town again doing another interview because he's the last one alive to talk about it. Terry Melcher, who was Doris Day's son, was his best friend, who's my godfather. Uh, yeah, it's just a very, so I'm born and raised in this business, born and raised. So at 18, my mother passed away and, you know, I went from living into her house, you know, figuring out what I was going to do with my life. And then she passed away very unexpectedly from a brain accident. Aneurysm. Oh, wow. And, you know, a week. Do you think that was one of the biggest defining moments of your life? Absolutely. When my mother passed away, I sort of couldn't be a kid anymore, you know? Yep. At that point, it was like, hey, where are you going to live? Where are you going to, how are you going to pay your bills? You know, pay your car payment. And I just got rammed into being an adult. And so a friend of my mother's who was at the funeral said, hey, talk to Chuck Barris. And I met with Chuck and he gave me a job at his production company. But and for people who don't know, who is Chuck Barris? Oh, Chuck. Who is Chuck Barris? I mean, My God. Um, I know. But I there's guess, people out there who really I might know. not know that. Anybody under the age of 50. But uh, yeah, Chuck Barris, you know, created the dating game, the newlywed game, the gong show. He revolutionized reality TV in some ways. Mm -hmm. uh, the godfather, if you will, of reality TV. And what I loved about Chuck was I was doing cue cards with Nikki Trebek, Alex's daughter. No and way. Nikki and I had gone to school together. And we would all, I'd, as, the, as they were bringing the audience in to sit, uh -huh. I would always be like, hey, where are you guys from? Where are you guys from? Like, and then they'd be like, Marky Cue Card. I'd be like, you know, I was horrible at it. But Chuck was like, get her off the floor and have her go in and brief the newlyweds before they go on stage. Be like their fluffer, if you will. Yeah, warm them up. Warm them up. I was the fluffer. We called it briefer. And, you know, and then from there, he gave me another job. I just sort of infiltrated their kind of casting and the talent and the reality aspect of the show and worked my way all the way up. So you worked your way up. So then does that mean you went into casting immediately after yes. that? Yep. I sort of revolutionized before reality was reality as big as it is TV. I went on my own and I said, hey, we're always in-house when we're working on a show casting. How about if I have my own company, Casting Entertainment Group, where we supply hosts, contestants, you know, but we can do four shows at a time, which uh -huh. was sort of unheard of back in the day. 
Wow. Okay. So, and then you were like, uh, then you started managing the. Well, clients. I cast Temptation Island, the first season of The Bachelor. I mean, you know, I, I had a very, you know, good career. I did tons of host casting. And I, even before, you know, all of that sort of Mishigas, I also did 10 independent features for Disney before independents were big casting. Wow. So I kind of knew it from the scripted, the unscripted. And then I was like, I love my casting company, but then I had an opportunity to parlay that into management. And I had a business partner, a male business partner, when I first started the management company, who ended up stealing from the company. But that's how I ended up buying him out. But yeah, and now 22 years later, I mean, I've put more people on TV. It's insane from, you know, uh, I would say Jason Kennedy, who I signed when he was a junior at Miami University. Oh, wow. Who, you know, now 12 years later on E! News and been hosting it ever since. And from Adrian Bankard on Good Morning America to, I mean, it's so crazy because when I watched Veronica De La Cruz, who's now on a CBS affiliate, but CNN to Whitney Cummings, uh, I mean, there's so many people. CeeLo Green, I've coached. Carly Kloss, I coached for Project Runway. I mean, I just, between managing, coaching, casting, everybody you see on TV or anybody you see on TV, Phil Kogan on The Amazing Race, has somehow come through my doors. So, okay, you've worked with so many different types of celebrities, and I know everybody out there is wondering. So I have to ask you, what is your favorite celebrity that you've worked with, and what's the story behind it? I think, oh, wow, that's so many of them are just fabulous and that I love. I would have to say I love Carly Kloss. You know, I would say when I met Carly, I was blown away not only how beautiful she was, but how smart she was, you know, and how authentic and genuine. And I thought if that could radiate, you know, on camera, because, you mm -hmm. know, when someone's a model making the transition, you know, oh, it, it, can she speak or is she just beautiful? And the fact yeah. that she could speak so eloquently and she was so genuine and relatable and nice and lovely, but had such a business mind. I, I think she is just someone to watch out for. I know Project Runway, she got a lot of flack. I, you know, for one, I was reading the blogs, which never do. Never. never. <laughs> Ever. Uh, and uh, I was, and people were like, oh, her voice or this or that. And I was just like, why do these people feel like their opinion matters? Why do we give an F? Like what you think, you know, Joe Schmo in Idaho picking your cherries or whatever the F you're picking, you know, um, <laughs> And that's also what's changed so dramatically is that the audience in 2019 between, you know, it's so interactive. So you could host a show and then the audience can then let the network know how they felt about your performance. And the biggest shift, no one thinks they need training. Everybody thinks I can learn how to be a news anchor or host from YouTube. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have people, I have about 80 submissions a day, people wanting for management. And wow. in the last eight months when I get content, someone will be like, hey, check out my host reel. And I click on the link. It's password protected. I'm like, you know. You're making this very difficult. Very difficult. Or here's my nine links and I watch one and then I'll write back, oh, no, thank you. Right now it's this or that. Or, and then they'll be like, but you didn't watch all the other eight links? Uh, no. <laughs> um, or here's my show, Tacos on Tuesday, and they're eating a taco with someone. Oh, do you like tacos? Have you ever had a taco from this place? And I'm like, how do you think that's hosting? You having a taco. It's a whole movie. I had a sweet guy email me yesterday going, oh, I've been shooting the last nine months. I really need management. He sends me this content of him in Hawaii coming out of the ocean. And I'm like, it's a whole movie. But the whole generation <laughs> thinks they can press the record button and that makes them talent. Not so much. So not so much. Then speaking of celebrities and people who might not have talent, not that celebrities don't, but influencers are the new celebrity. In some ways, how do you think that influencers and everybody with a camera has changed the landscape of hosting? Well, how influencers and anybody with a camera has changed the landscape is really quite simple. Everybody now thinks they're talent. Everybody. You know, I was looking for insurance quotes for my son recently, and the guy's like, oh, when they were like occupation, you know, talent manager. Oh, I, I can act. I can host my own show. I could do this. And then. <laughs> no, you did not get pitched. While you're I get pitched constantly, and I want to go, well, then who the F would sell me my insurance? Not everybody <laughs> can be in front of the camera. Who's going to like brush our, you know, get our teeth cleaned with? Who is, you know. But. The reality is, I think now in our business, the last four years, yes, it was like they have to have two million followers, they have to have this, but they realized those people didn't follow them. If they followed them on YouTube, they weren't going to follow them to a network. They liked watching them on YouTube. They liked the short form content. So big networks, you know, hired all these influencers to have their own show. And then they were like, uh, why are 200,000 people watching when she has two million followers? Because people don't want to follow them to broadcast.
Interesting. Yeah. So now we're realizing that it's not about, you know, it, like recently there was four big shows where they wanted a host. And, and I was like, OK, so you want them to be a woman, this, that, boom, boom, boom. What about their following? We don't care. We want them to be a good host. We want to know they can interview. We want to know that we can send them out, you know, to Ohio with the crew and they're going to get a great interview from this family that we're going to do their, you know, genealogy about, you know. Um, so now it's getting actually back to talent. So anybody watching right now, learn your craft. That's what I was going to ask. What are your advice? Learn then? your craft. Do, people do you do? want to go to a doctor who didn't go to med school? <laughs> I don't know. Do you, do you, you know, do you want to go to a lawyer that didn't go to law school? Do you want an accountant who's not Jewish? Yeah. No! My <laughs> fiance would love that joke. Right, right. So then you're saying now social media doesn't even really matter or it does? No, you have to have a presence on social media. But you need to have that presence be about your brand and, and what you're all about. So let's say you have built a brand on like Courtney Six, How To Girl, who I've coached and managed and guided. And, you know... When Courtney started How To Girl, she was like, I just love, like, if you saw a flower arrangement on Keeping Up With The Kardashians, I'm going to show the audience how to do that without spending $250 at Mark's Garden, how you can do that in your own garden for 10 bucks. Amazing. And now it's huge. And this, and, and it's, you know, she's navigating all of these collab deals. So meaning what, we don't so much want your influencers to host a TV show, but we will let you, if you have 2 million followers and you have a nice engagement with those 2 million followers, you can then now parlay it into paid posts. Got it. Advertising. So that's where influencing then is is at, and that's where it's going to stay, and hosting's going to get back to actually people who spend the time and energy and are living and breathing and are actually hosts. Yes, but let me say one thing to every influencer watching. Here's the thing. You have to truly be an influencer. You have to be influencing us with something that you have credibility, knowledge, a passion. And, and I think that's the, like I said to someone recently, a girl that came into my office, she's like, I'm an influencer. And I was Do like, people like really come in and actually that's what yes, I'm I'm an influencer. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, cool. What are you influencing people with? But, and I'm like, well, what, if you're an influencer, what are you influencing them with? come again, what? Like, and then I look at their social media and they're, you know, in, in bikinis and naked. So you're influencing them with your body. Here's the problem with that brand. In five years, after you have a baby and this or that, you know, there's going to be two million hotter chicks coming down the pike. You can't influence them with your body for 40 years. So you want to constantly be reinventing yourself. Maybe you start off by getting two million followers because you're hot, but then evolve them into something else. Every great performer, every great actor, every great host, every great singer reinvents themselves every five years. That's the key to success. So reinvent yourself. Can't be stagnant. An right. And then you mentioned brand. So really crafting. Then do you think every post needs to be the messaging of your brand? Sort of. So like we also see now I'm getting bigger dollars for my influencers that are micro influencers mm -hmm. versus an influencer that has two million followers. And I'll tell you why, because that micro influencer that may have thirty five thousand followers, but their mm -hmm. engagement with that thirty five thousand is so high that they now garner more per ad post. So I have a girl now who has thirty five thousand followers. She's got a great brand. She literally gets ten thousand dollars a paid app. So we do four or five a month. She's making sixty, you know, fifty to sixty grand a month. And then are you pitching her for these deals? Absolutely. She's on the radio. We pitch her social, and then we create content for her to keep piping out there for host and broadcast, you know, buyers showing that she knows how to interview, co-host, can do game, do this, because that's what buyers want to see. Now, when they click on your materials, they want to see if I give Suzanne an interviewing show, mm -hmm. can she interview? Well, as I Fingers saw from crossed. your amazing open with me, your piggybacking, your amazing media <laughs> skills, your fluidity. <laughs> so, yes, you have a shot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 You heard it here first. Got it. And so then you now rep. And do you think and other big talent agencies are also repping influencers? Absolutely. So, you know, we have an in and, and now, you know, before a year ago, we had like a tab on our website, influencers, hosts, you know, now it's just like talent because it all just melded into one. If I take on an influencer, I'm going to teach them how to host. I'm going to teach them how to host because any great successful billionaire will tell you, you have to have six or seven revenues of income coming in. Yep. And so what I say to this talent is I love what you've built. And this is amazing that you've kind of cornered this on social media. But let's evolve you so that you can corner this 
in broadcast. Um, and so we just build their content, their brand, their materials. We shoot a bio because once again, no one wants to read a bio anymore. People nope. want to click on a video and you navigating them through how you got started, why you love this career, what stuff that you've done. And we can see all of that. And we get to meet you while we're, we're looking at all of this in a three to four minute bio. Great. So you're mentioning all the things a host and influencer should do. What do you think is the biggest mistake that most hosts and influencers do? The biggest mistake, it, this is not even a question, hands down is. Yep. They think they know everything. Really? Like, yeah, they're like, oh, I don't, like, I, no, I don't need training. I don't need this. I don't need a consult. I don't need this. Like, yeah, I just want to, I want to host America's Got Talent. <laughs> and you're like, okay, but have you ever hosted before? Well, look on my website. I've hosted on my own platform. Yeah, you getting out of a pool saying, isn't it hot in Hawaii? Like, they don't understand that that's not going to make a network feel comfortable to hand them the reins of a multi-million dollar show. It's just not. No. So they, yeah, they're not going to put that in your hands. Education. You have got to learn your craft, you know, and, and a lot of buyers will hire someone and then call me up and say, hey, can you coach them? So like recently I coached this guy who's doing uh, he's a huge comic, a redneck comic, huge. My um, comic. And he got a, a Food Network barbecue show. Because his redneck brand and, you know, humor fit with this creative. But what did the network do immediately? Get him coaching. Because that's smart on the network's part, you know. And then it's interesting when he shot the pilot, his manager emailed me right after saying, like, you know, it was just amazing for him to have that time with you because he felt so comfortable going in, you know. Yeah. Knowledge is power. A hundred percent. Well, I think that's one of the things that I loved. I did take Marky's boot camp and her class. Smart girl. Smart girl. Education yep. is important. No, but that's one of the things you really help people with. You give them not only, because I think a lot of it too is what you talk about is your point of view is your personality. 100%. And it gives people the permission and also the like not, excuse my language, but giving a fuck. Right. And you're very much an advocate of the more authentic, I hate that word, I think it's overused, but really that you are, the more that's going to resonate with people out there. 100%. What's trending now in social media is vulnerability. 100%. You know, we Renee see Brown it now. Exactly, amazing. right. You know, everybody's sort of, you know, sharing their stories now, being vulnerable, letting us in because it had to happen. You think about it, if, if I'm lying in bed, Oh, do I want to watch Mindhunters that just dropped on Netflix? Oh, my God, I have this in my queue. I have, you know, oh, I love this YouTube guy. Who's up? What's happening on social media? We have so much coming at us, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really now about quality yep. over quantity. And I think that talent has to realize you want to be authentic and real and pump out quality content. But in order for us to follow you or, or watch you, you have to let us in. So would you say, if you have three tips for a host who really wants to stay competitive in this space, what would those three tips be? Would it be one of them be vulnerable? One of them, yes, absolutely, be vulnerable. Also think about formatted content. I don't want to see you getting out of a pool at the Four Seasons and you telling me you're hosting a show. You know what I mean? Meaning, because that doesn't tell me you're hosting a show. I want to look at your content and go, wow, she can interview. Wow. And then when she's interviewing, I love how she knows the three R's, reveal, relatable ratings. But in the context of that conversation, so it's not all about you, but we get to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being able to navigate through those different elements that we need with an on-camera host we're hiring is super important. And let me ask you this. If people that are huge hosting come and get training, what makes you think that you don't, Joe Schmo from Idaho, right? Like, you know, uh, and, and it just blows my mind. You know, people will be like, yeah, I want to have a talk show. I want to be the next Oprah. And I'll be like, okay, tell me a little bit about you. And it's like, well, there's nothing to tell. I just like her and I want to do what she did, like, and make those billions of dollars. And it's just like, you have to walk before you can run. You have to crawl before you can walk. And then you got to walk before you can run. And I think work ethic is what's lacking. And I hate well, to I think that's work ethic probably with most millennials. And totally. I hate to say I that. I hate to say it too. Because I feel like a lot of people are going to be like, you know, writing it on the comments, screw you. But really, there is a sense of entitlement and a lack of, I think, understanding of the process. 100%. Listen, I have a millennial child. You know, I have a 10-year-old and a 22-year-old. And it's interesting because my 22-year-old is casting for MTV and, oh, you know, cool. kind of following my footsteps unbeknownst to anything I ever sort of pushed him in. But what's interesting, I said to his, his boss recently said, Marky, what an amazing, he has the most amazing work ethic of any 22-year-old. He's never missed a day. He's mm -hmm. always perfectly on time. And, and I said to him, I'm like, why do you think you're like that? You know, and he goes, well, I watched you get up every day and work so hard to provide for me and Finn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's all I know.
Um, and I was like, yeah, it brings... <laughs> no, he just got his first apartment. He's moving out this weekend, so it's bittersweet in so many ways. But absolutely, I would say to every millennial, I have millennials that work in my office, and what pisses me off is I'll say, you're doing the bare minimum. Show me that I need you. Show me what you're good at, because in my office, whether it's casting, creating content, writing and producing content, editing content, pitching talent, like... What is it that you love? Because it's not about the destination. It's your journey to the destination. And that's what millennials forget. They just concentrate on, I want to be here. And they don't realize, well, on your way to there, learn all this shit. Yeah. Meet all these people because it will help you once you are in that destination. I feel like this is a really good place to, we only have a, like, okay. not much more time. Yes. So I want to ask you two final questions. Yes. Um, one of which is, what was your greatest failure and what did it teach you? <laughs> Ooh, my greatest failure. Um, well, that's a tricky question because I really, I don't ever, ever say I failed in any way. I go, I learned from that experience that taught me this, right? Um, so and a seemingly, like a seeming failure to other people, but maybe a learning lesson to you. I, you know, it's interesting. I really, I've never had a loss for words, but I don't look at anything as a failure. I literally go, that person screwed me over. I failed in that, but I learned X, Y, and Z, or I got this. So I'm really like a positive. I, I just want to say that this is the first time Marky has been speechless, and I want to own that. <laughs> own it. You have the exclusive scoop right here on Defining yes. Moments. Yes. <laughs> okay. And then if you could define the legacy you want to leave behind in a couple Ooh, of words, a great what question. would it be? The legacy I want to leave behind to my kids and anybody who I've touched in my 53 years on this planet is that, you know, kindness really doesn't cost a dime to be kind. Mm -hmm. And I think we're losing our humanity and our kindness and you know, it's not, you don't have to be a hater on Instagram. You don't have to get revenge. You know, those people will work their own way out in life. You know, it's interesting. Someone screwed me over three years ago and then someone told me today the show got canceled. And I thought, so I didn't have to sue them. I didn't have to do all those shitty things. They're paying their own piper. You know what I mean? Because we all have our own sort of cross to bear. And I, my legacy is when I go to sleep at night, I can put my head on my pillow and sleep great because I don't screw people over. I'm honest. I work hard. And I'm kind. And kindness goes a lot, a, a long way. If we need to get kindness back because we're losing that in oh, where we are in 2019. Yeah. yeah. The country is very divided. Right. Having said that, guys. Practice kindness in your own lives. And I always say fearlessly own your story. So let's own where we're at in our journey. And if you're a host and you're an influencer, get out there, work hard, create content, create a solid brand, and go take Marky's class. Woohoo! <laughs> where can they find you? Uh, you Tell can, the yes, you can <laughs> find me at Marky, M A R K I, at C M E G dot com or call us at 1 888 878 2634. And don't submit with a video of getting out of a pool. Please. Or eating a taco. Right. Show me you can host. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>